Hey guys, welcome to a special edition of uh, Tech Talk with me, R&D Lee. Today we are going to do a three-part uh, special on what's inside. Okay, so we're talking about what's inside an electric skateboard. What actually makes it go? Okay, so um, you might find this interesting. You know, if people who are at like the DIY level, this isn't going to go quite into as much detail as that. But for people that, um, you know, you, you want to buy a board, you want a complete board, you want a good board like an Atom Electric, but you also just want to know a little bit more of kind of what's going on inside this, this is what this is for. Okay, so the first part of our series, we're going to focus on uh, the battery component. So, so the three parts, first part is going to be batteries. The second part is going to be our controllers, okay, so ESC, electric speed controllers, all the circuitry and software that kind of manages the... It's like the communication point between the batteries and your drive systems. And then the third part we're going to cover are drive systems. At Electric, we have a couple different ones. We've got hub motors, we've got belt drives, so we'll cover all that stuff. But in the first uh, series, we're just going to tackle uh, batteries. So this right here is pretty nondescript. It's just a black box. Um, but what's inside of this is a lithium battery. Now, lithium batteries, that's really kind of the the key to the revolution that we're seeing right now in electric transport. For a long time, people have been doing all types of electric vehicles, but they just have never kind of reached that, uh, that critical mass of, of just something that just works and it's lightweight and it goes far and it's just fun. So that's where we're at right now and that's why you're seeing you know, so, so many people out on electrics at the moment. Um, so basically, the key to that is lithium, and we we have so many people to thank on that, but mainly it's it's the pioneers like Elon Musk and Tesla that have really kind of the pushed the limits of what a battery can do, and so we're we're thankful for that. And in, in fact, one interesting tidbit of information there is that the batteries in in this board right here um, are the exact same cells that are used in uh, Teslas. Okay, it's a Panasonic cell. So we'll kind of get a little bit into the more, uh, the, the detail on cells in a little bit, but that's just kind of an interesting piece of information. Really awesome high capacity cell from Panasonic. Okay, so like I said, this doesn't look like much, um, but if you take, you know, down one level, uh, some of the batteries, you know, this is encased in a plastic case for an H16 model. Um, some of our older models just have the, uh, the normal kind of blue pack around it so you can start to kind of see some of the cylindrical shapes of the cells. If you take it down one more one more level you can actually see the individual cells and you can see this is what an actual individual uh, cell looks like. Now there's all types of different um, lithium cells so another one that you might be familiar with is you know one that is actually in your cell phone your mobile phone. Um, Different, in, in general, the chemistry is all the same of kind of what's going on inside there, but the way that they're manufactured is different. Um, the cylindrical wrap on the lithium as, as compared to the, you know, the soft, they're called soft cells. Um, now, we, we use all the, these, this size of battery and the style is called an 18650. It has to do with the dimensions of the battery, um, 18 millimeters in diameter and 65 millimeters length, so they're called 18650s. And the reason that we use those, well, a couple reasons. One is just, um, we're all about testing. That's, that's me, R&D Lee. You know, years and years and years of testing have shown that the 18650s are the most reliable. Um, they're the safest batteries. They have, you know, just kind of extra precautions uh, that, that some of the soft cell batteries don't have. Now, the only advantage to people that use soft cells is if you're trying to get something to fit into an incredibly thin shape, like a mobile phone, you know, that's one thing. And there are certain, you know, electric uh, skateboard 
uh, companies that, that do use soft cells. But in our experience, just for we're all about safety, we're all about reliability, we're all about customer service. So we just use the best thing on the market that we can find, and that's these 18650s. Now, the other thing is once you've chosen, once we chose our 18650s, the next thing to notice is or to note is which cells are we using? Now there's there's several factories around the world um, that do make cells, but what we found over the years are is that the number one most reliable uh, or there, there's three really top ones, and and that's you know Samsung, Panasonic is fantastic, and Sony is great as well. So those are kind of like those are top dogs. Um, LG was up there for a while, and we've used LG. Uh, uh, cells in our, you know, in different models in the past. Now, at, at this stage, we don't use any more LG because um, we just found they're just not as reliable. It's, it's a good cell performance-wise, but for that kind of long-term, everyday, riding hard, hitting bumps, um, really, Samsung, Panasonic, Sony, those are the guys that, that we like to use. Okay, so that's, that's just talking about cells. Now, keep in mind, I, I may have mentioned before, but a cell is just one of these individual cylinders. When you when you combine all those cylinders into uh, you know together when you wire them together it becomes a battery. So a battery is just by ne definition um, one or, or two or more cells you know linked together. Now when you do link these cells together, there's two different ways to do it. Okay, so there, you can basically um, <clears throat> the the two words are one is you can link them in parallel or you can link them in series. Now series, parallel, is something like this where you have actually your two positive poles up here and they're linked, the two positives are connected and the two negatives are connected. Those guys are linked in parallel. Now, if you go and you link them end to end, so positive to negative, that's called linking in series. Now, these guys right here, um, this is actually a battery out of our old H6. Um, and these guys might look like they're actually linked in parallel because they're side by side. But the way we do the wiring, you actually see some wires there. It's linking all the um, the actual negative terminal to the positive terminal. So this um, is what we call a 10S, meaning there's 10 cells in series and you know one P. So basically, there's no cells linked in in parallel. If it had another um, row of cells down here that were linked in parallel, then that would be a 10S and a 2P, okay? So that all sounds like kind of crazy talk, but the reason that I mention it is because it gets to the fundamentals of batteries, which, which are two things. A battery has voltage and it has capacity, all right? So the thing, the reason that's important to know is because when you, when you read specs, it can be really overwhelming for people to read specs of an electric skateboard these days. And for us at, at Adam, we're all about just educating people so you can make the best decision possible. And we feel like when you are educated, you're gonna make the, the best decision possible is to, to buy one of our boards, of course, because we put you know all the time and the effort and the resources into making them the best that we can make them. So when you're reading specs, hopefully this will just help you just tease out some of the things that um, that, that might be confusing because when people you know they'll they'll quote range but range varies and they'll overquote it and we like to be really honest on our specs so giving you that extra bit of information hopefully will help in that so the reason I mentioned the series is um, each one of these cells is a 3.6 volt um, cell okay so we're talking about voltage and the fact that they're connected in series ten of them means that you multiply that times 10. So 3.6 times 10 gets you up to 36 volts. So when you read on, you know, in the specs, hey, what's the voltage of this board? 36 volts is a pretty common for, for a good performance board. A lot of boards will be, you know, 24 volts, some are lower. And what that actually means and what a battery is, why that's important is because if you don't have the appropriate amount of voltage in the battery, no matter what you have down the line, your ESC, you could have it just amazing. You can have the, you know, 10,000 or, you know, one kilowatt motors on here. If you don't have a battery that's going to power it, that stuff means nothing. Okay, so, and one thing that we spec in all of ours is the watt hours of our batteries. And that's just an indication of just how much energy is in this thing. So just at a glance, you can look and say, yep, 
if it's, you know, 70 watt hours, that's one thing, 90 watt hours, you know, 180 watt hours, you know, 200 watt hours, it just tells you, hey, this is how much kind of ultimate power is in this board. Um, and how that's used, whether it's a lot of, you know, power and grunt, or if it's just a nice long range one, that gets down into the specifics. But, um, but in general, uh, that just gives you a bit of information. So, so your voltage is, is determined like by how many are, are in series there. So voltage you can think of like, like a hose, okay? So if you have a hose and you turn the spigot on a little bit, the water's just gonna barely drip out because it's just like, it's like pressure, okay? Um, if it's low pressure, it's just, it's not doing much. You can think on a board, it's just kind of like limping along. But if you crank that thing up, you know, so that's, you know, three volts, four volts, you know, 10 volts, 15 volts, you get that spigot opened up to 36 volts and the hose is pumping. It's like a fire hose at that point. So that's the importance of building up your voltage is you're building up, it's called potential. It's just how much power can you release in any given second, okay? So what we find, we like 36 volts because it gives you the grunt that you need, uh, but it's still a, it's a safe voltage. We're not doing, you know, a thousand volts or something that needs a high voltage sign on it. And if you open up the battery box, you're gonna like die or something like that. So it's, a, it's still a pretty safe voltage, but it gives you all the power that you need to get up the hills of San Francisco or, you know, do whatever you wanna do. Um, so that, that's basically, most of what I want to say with the uh, with the cells, um, the parallel, just so you know, the other kind of component is is your amp hours. That's a capacity type of thing, and that just means how how long do you want the battery to last? So voltage is how much do you want to get out of it in a burst, and your amp hours is you know how long do you want the thing? How many hours can you go as you know say one amp or something like that so it's just basically how much range are you going to get out of this thing and the last thing to explain on that is if you want to decipher um, you'll you, you'll hear people talk voltage is obvious you'll hear amp hours the other thing that you'll hear is watt hours and the reason that we like to talk about watt hours is because it demystifies everything all watt hours is is your volts times your amp hours equals watt hours. So it just says, hey, you know, some people might spec a really high amp hour. Hey, this is 8.8 .8 amp hours. But if their voltage is only 10 volts or, you know, 20 volts, it doesn't mean much, okay? Um, the same thing, you can have a high voltage but a really low amp hour rating. Same thing, your, your watt hours aren't that much. So we like to spec watt hours because it just says exactly, you can kind of compare apples to apples at that point you know if you have a high voltage and a high um, amp hour, then you're gonna get high uh, watt hours out of that. Anyway, so that, that's basically all I wanna say. We use super duper safe batteries. We know what's going on inside here. And yeah, we care about your safety and we care about your experience on our boards. And hopefully that's just shed a little bit of information on uh, the first part of the series, which is the lithium batteries. Um, if, if I've missed anything, please, Leave a question or a comment down below. We'll get back to you guys. Um, otherwise, what you got to do is just tune into the second part of the series where we talk about the controllers, which is the next link. This is where the source of your power is. The controllers are basically the brain behind managing that power. How much do you, you want to break? Do you want to do you know, more acceleration? Um, and then, of course, later on after that, to the third part of the series where we're going to cover our, um, our drive system. So if you haven't already, Make sure you subscribe so you can stay tuned to updates, more tech talks as they come out. And uh, other than that, I'll see you uh, for part two.